machine learning and um, intelligence, real-time intelligence, by collaborating um, between Spark and um, Redis. All right, um, so in case you have been, haven't been paying attention, AI is all the rage this world um, these days. Self-driving cars, AlphaGo, um, even the Google Home, the Alexa um, that you can buy now, are nothing short of miracles if you view that it um, from somebody's perspective 10 years ago. Now, one thing that's interesting, if you talk about machine learning to a lot of engineers that haven't actually done a lot of machine learning, is they would think machine learning is about the algorithms. Um, the innovations are coming from algorithms that's happening in the last um, five or 10 years. That's why AlphaGo, for example, can actually beat the best 19-year-old players in Go um, a couple of weeks ago. Now, that's actually not necessarily the case, because if you actually look at the fundamental algorithms for machine learning or for deep learning, many of them haven't really fundamentally changed in the last 20 years almost. Um, one thing that's really different with big data was actually the missing link. Um, there's a couple of things about big data. One is the uh, computational resources is now much more readily available um, that makes it possible to actually compute and run the algorithms. The other thing is, for the first time in human history, we are able to actually collect large amount of data, and it's a part of the reason you're actually here. Um, Redis is an um, important part of that effort. The, um, and with all of this, um, we can actually now do the machine learning algorithms, run them, on large amount of data to get the results we want. Um, there's one actually very interesting paper um, published by Google in NIPS um, just three, uh, two years ago called The Hidden Technical Debt of Machine Learning Systems. And this is actually, it's one of my favorite pictures to explain what machine learning is really about in practice. And here um, you will see, um, essentially they drew out, in order to do a real life um, machine learning system or AI system, um, here are all the boxes, all the big modules you have to build. And in the I'm not sure if you can even see it. In the middle of it, there's this tiny black box called ML code, machine learning code. And then there's a lot of surrounding pieces, configuration, collecting of data, feature extraction, um, data verification, and serving, last, um, last but not least, and monitoring of the results. Um, so in order to actually do machine learning projects, to actually build AI, you need to do a lot of pieces that's not just machine learning. Now, let me take a step back and talk about Databricks, um, just in case you don't know um, what the company is. So we are an um, almost four-year-old company. I believe maybe tomorrow is our four-year anniversary um, that um, started by the team that created Spark um, almost four years ago. The, uh, our vision is to empower enterprises to actually innovate faster with big data. And the, uh, we're actually really good friends with Redis. Even our logo looks the same. <laughs> the, uh, and in case you don't know about Spark yet, um, it's um, right now actually the largest and the most popular um, open source project in the data analytics space. The um, focus on, I would say, three philosophies. One is uh, speed and ease of use, and the last one is uh, advanced analytics. And Databricks product itself is a unified analytics platform um, that has two layers. The bottom layer is powered by Spark, and what we call a serverless Spark platform in which our customers can actually program against Spark APIs. Um, and just let the jobs run without having to worry about any of the configuration, tuning, provisioning of the resources. And at the up, um, upper half, there's sort of the collaborative data science workbench um, that you actually see in a bit in the demo. All right? So now, remember that picture from the Google's paper. So this is what a, a typical machine learning lifecycle, shortened, would look like from a, if a data scientist is trying to put something in production. Um, typically, you have some data stored somewhere. It could either be in a database, could be in an Amazon S3. Um, you load it into Spark. And Spark is actually really good at doing the training. So Spark itself includes a lot of uh, machine learning. It includes a machine learning library called MLlib um, that includes almost all the uh, standard machine learning um, algorithms you want. And then you can use Spark to actually train the data. Now, this training step itself is very long. It could take days, it could take months, sometimes it might even take 10 years because you want to experiment with different algorithms. Um, and then once you've done the work, you want to save the model somewhere because you want to use this model in production. You want to be able to use your model to do predictions. Um, for example, serving ads, deciding which one to serve. Um, typically, the way it works is you output the model um, using the model persistence feature in uh, Spark to save it into a file, um, distributed file system like uh, HDFS or Amazon S3. And then you can, 
Now comes to serving. There's no real standard serving solutions out there. So one of the most common things, people will be building their custom serving apps. Um, here, they will be loading their serving apps every time they launch, probably load the models actually from the uh, HDFS into the serving app, and then the client apps can connect to the serving app. Now, of course, you want your serving apps to be HA. Um, if you're making predictions about what, uh, recommending people what to buy, you don't want the service to go down. Every second it goes down is a problem. So you have to take care of HA. You have to take care of a lot of other things, how to scale your serving maybe across different geography. Now, before you know it, you're building all the infrastructure. So just showing the picture again, Spark is actually pretty good at helping you with ETL, data collection, feature engineering, even training part. Now, the truth is it is missing the last mile, which is how do we serve the actual models to do predictions? So Redis ML is the second time we're talking about it um, this morning. The, uh, it's a, uh, in case you didn't pay attention in the earlier talk, um, it's an ML serving engine that you can store actually models in Redis, and you can use Redis to do the uh, model predictions and the evaluations. Um, it actually integrates with a lot of machine learning libraries, including Spark's MLlib, um, which we'll show in the demo in a bit. Um, and you could actually rely on all the Redis infrastructure, um, including HA and scalability um, in your machine learning pipelines. So the new life cycle with machine learning um, can be like this. You load the data in Spark, you train with Spark, do your experimentations, a lot of data engineers, data scientists there, and then export your model directly into Redis ML, and then use Redis to actually serve it. Now, your existing IT infrastructure team that actually understands Redis can directly rely on that. Um, so next, I'll have Richard um, Garris, um, solution architect from Databricks, to actually be doing a demo and I should conclude the talk. Thank you, Reynolds. Um, so in our previous discussion, we talked about recommendation engines. I mean, you guys see this every day on your, on your mobile phones, and you get ads, and you get uh, recommendations from Netflix. Um, so recently, Netflix changed their algorithm. Uh, one of the problems they had was that there was like five stars for their system, but everyone would rate things a three, because no one can say, oh, this is a really good movie, really bad movie. Um, so they changed it thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, so one of the ways that uh, with Spark, as Spark has an analytical engine, you can create um, recommendations also using decision trees. And I'm going to show you an example of that using the movie lens data set. Um, so I'm going to ask a quick survey question for people. Um, so how many people are Star Trek fans? Star Trek. Okay. How many people are Star Wars fans? All right. All right. More Star Wars. Okay. So I'm more of a Star Trek fan. Um, so just as a testament to the algorithm here, so if I do Star Trek, I get... A 96% match, so the probability that I like this is 96. Clone Wars, not so much, 66 match. So the algorithm works. Um, so how does Netflix do this? Uh, Netflix has been a user of, of Spark for many years, and Spark 0.8, and the, their claim to fame is really the algorithm. So really to be able to take all that data and do predictions. Um, so I'm logged into Databricks uh, Cloud. This is our cloud platform, as Reynolds said, uh, for doing machine learning. And I'm going to show you how you can combine the power of Spark ML Lib with Redis ML to do the serving uh, of your predictions. Um, so the beauty of the platform is really the ability to do introspection of your data. So you can look at your data sets here. Um, you can look at the actual data itself. In this case, it is pretty dirty. You see um, various uh, listings of the various movies. You see the ratings data, which is a series of files. They're very separate. Um, in a few lines of, of Python in this case, you can actually combine the two data sets together to create a table called movies and a table called ratings. And then use SQL to actually combine these two data sets together. So if you explore a bit further, uh, you can see here that we have over uh, 10,000 movies in our data set, uh, various movie categories as well as different years. And here you can see uh, those various movies listed out. All right, let me jump over to the next part, so how do you train your model. Okay, so in this case, what we have is a whole bunch of different users and the movies they actually like. Um, so given the movies they actually like, um, you'd be able to do predictions around what they're, able to, what they're able to see next and those ratings that we saw before, like how likely are they to like a different movie. Um, so within Spark, you can load up your data sets. In this case, we're using uh, user number 10, and we're going to load up different features. Um, in ML speak, a feature is um, an attribute of that particular uh, person in terms of the movies they like, and it's usually expressed as a vector. So in this case, you're looking at an array of the various uh, features. In this case, we're going to use a, a model called random forest. 
Um, so Random Forest is a series of decision trees that all work together um, to do a prediction based on voting. Uh, so in this case, we're going to use uh, 500 different trees to vote on which of these different movies that a person would particularly like. Um, so typically, as we described before with machine learning, you would save off the model. In this case, we're using S3 as a file system to save off that model. And then you had to load the model into memory to do predictions. Um, the issue with that is that S3 is designed as a distributed file store. It's not designed for doing a serving layer. Um, so what we're going to do is, you, know, you can save this off as Parquet, and you can see the data sets here. And typically, you'd have to build a custom app to read in this data, to read in these different tree nodes to do the predictions off the data set. Um, so Redis, and particularly uh, Shai, who's one of the engineers at Redis, put together a module in Redis that allows you to do serving directly from Redis, which gives you a lot of ability to do, do speed. Um, so I'm going to load this, um, this um, here. I actually have a Redis server running on this machine in Databricks Cloud. And then I'm going to do a quick benchmark comparing uh, scoring in, in uh, Databricks using uh, open source Spark versus scoring using Redis. So you can see here the Redis time is much faster. This is two, two milliseconds versus 30 milliseconds for, for Spark. So it's almost, uh, in this case, 15x faster. In this case, almost uh, 60x, fa 60x faster, uh, 28x faster. So you can see here that these are the different averages. Uh, so in conclusion, you're able to take your, your data and be able to do train your models in Spark, which is assigned for distributed compute, um, but then do your predictions in Redis, which gives you a lot of uh, performance boost up to 40x faster depending on your data and depending on your classification problem. All right, if you want to have no more information about the Redis ML module, uh, Shai will be doing a talk today at 1.45 p.m. Uh, you can check the wallboard outside for the location of that talk. and It'll give you some more details about, this, about the module. Additionally, as, uh, as Renaldo said, we're celebrating our fourth anniversary as a company, Databricks. Um, so next week, if you guys are still around, please join us at the Moscone Center across the street. We're going to be having 3,000 individuals uh, all working on uh, talking about their various Spark projects, deep learning, AI. Uh, and please join us for our conference. There's a discount code, uh, Databricks, if you want to save 15% on the conference. Um, thank you very much.